Welcome back to Arise uh, News. This is the morning show with me, Biola Labi. We are sitting here today with Jennifer Uchendu and on, um, to talk about on environmental sustainability. We are going to be telling, we're going to start with a quick video. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Uchindu, and I'm the founder of Susti Vibes. Susti Vibes basically means sustainability vibes and we're a social enterprise in Nigeria redefining sustainability advocacy for young people. I founded Susti Vibes when I got really frustrated about the job market in Nigeria. We had 60% of our population being young people and not a lot of us had a clue about sustainability or climate change issues. I decided from an online blog to educate Nigerians, especially young people, about the impact of sustainability and how they could become better citizens of the planet. Through our work at Susti Vibes, we've been able to get a platform for over 100 volunteers going out to the streets, doing online campaigns, sensitizing young Nigerians about the impacts of climate change and other sustainability issues. Our Stare Down on Pollution campaign, for example, goes out to the streets of Lagos to talk to people about climate change, waste management, and also introduce them to recycling. We've seen about 500 Nigerians get signed up to recycling initiatives just because we went out to the streets to talk to them. We also have an active online campaign with over 1 million impressions right now. We've also been able to organize movie screenings across Nigeria, in Lagos, in Abuja and in other states where we gather young people together to teach them climate change issues. We've seen people plant trees just because they've learned one or two things from our website. We've seen them also gain inspiration to do different things for the planet. I'm excited for the future of Nigeria because of what I've started with Susti Vibes. That was a short video from my next guest, Jennifer Uchendu, who is the founder of Susti Vibes. She, we've just seen her video, and in that video, she describes her social enterprise and what it's all about. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Jennifer, it's such a pleasure to have someone like you on the show. You're young. You're vibrant, and you are striving to make sure that Nigeria meets its sustainable development goals, and you've created Susti Vibes. So why Susti Vibes? Why is that, why that name? Why did you feel like, is it because it connects with young people? Why that name? Well, definitely. So when I was thinking about a name for young people and sustainability, I mean, there was this long NGO sort of boring names. And at some point I was like, we'll just call it Susti Vibes. And people are like, are people going to take you seriously? But Susti essentially is the short form of sustainability. Yes, so yes. we're making, um, will I say impact, vibrations, vibes, and then we just, putting in people's minds that sustainability can be cool, and that's just what we're doing with Susti Vibes, basically. So, Jennifer, I mean, it's a social enterprise. How did you get started? I mean, you, you were working a, a yes. full-time job. Yes, I was, um, I, I had a full-time job, and I remember the day I resigned and started thinking of starting up um, Susti Vibes. We kind of started as an online blog, you know, just tweeting, you know, social media, talking about sustainability. But so, there was a niche for us because we're looking at it from the youth perspective and talking about it, how it affects us. Oh, this place is dirty. We don't, it's not mm. cool, you know, those kind of mm. stuff. And um, from an online blog, we decided to have hangouts and we saw that there okay. were a lot of people who were interested in what we're doing. There was a, like a rave on social media wanting to connect with what we do. And then that was also when the SDGs were coming to um, life in um, globally, basically. So it was just easy for us to plug in to the global SDGs, the Paris Agreement. And then we just started off. I then decided to like, get it registered, had my team set up a board. So it's now like a proper social enterprise. And I want to say congratulations, because today officially marks your two-year anniversary. Yes, thank you. Wow, well thank done. You. Thank you. And so since the last two years that you started, you're now an officially an, an NGO, you have a board. What are some of the things that you guys do? Like. The, I know you mentioned five pillars. What are some of those pillars and how do you work with young people on those pillars? Okay, so because we're like a volunteer-driven organization, our volunteers, we call them Susti Vibers, they drive the work that we ah, do. Susti Vibers, <laughs> Yeah, they're like so it. cool, Susti Vibers rock. <laughs> <laughs> so basically we have five pillars cut across education for sustainable development, 
So this is basically a team going out to secondary schools to teach students on sustainability and um, SDGs. And then we also just recently started the university hangouts where we just have informal conversations with university students on development issues, the sustainable development goals, and how they can sort of start opening their minds to think of possibilities of changing Nigeria to like a sustainable develop, um, developed nation, basically. And then we also have our pollution team because, mm. I mean, you're thinking of sustainability, you're thinking of the environment, and we thought it was easy to relate, and it's sort of like our largest team now, the pollution guys. They're going out to the streets to synthesize people on pollution, littering, you know, we started this campaign, Stead and on Pollution, where everyone has a part to play in saving the environment. Just like frown at it, talk to someone about it, be in your trash, you know. Several campaigns have also come off of that for just people sensitizing. And then we have um, our women development team, okay. which is very close to my heart because um, I identify as an eco-feminist, someone who advocates for women empowerment and development as well as the environment. So basically... Well, the world has said that the number one woman, un woman under instinction today is Mother Nature. She is yeah, the no exactly. most oppressed woman today. So I'm, I'm, it's exciting to exactly. hear you say that. So yeah, that's the narrative we bring into the work um, from that side. So a lot of our projects are aimed at girl-child mm -hmm. empowerment or development as it may be. But looking at it from the environment side, women, women's rights and climate change, how does climate change affect women? And how can we bring these conversations to light for more people to understand these issues, basically? And then the SDGs have goal five as gender equality. So we talk strongly on that, basically. And then we also have a team called um, Susty Business. Okay. Basically just doing work on business sustainability. Okay. Last year, um, my partner, Adia Tuluku and I, we sort of put up a guide, an e-book online, where you could just download and learn about business sustainability in Nigeria. So before now, these things were vague. I knew a lot about it, but then I had to go How online. How did you find out about these things? Well, so it was as far back as uni, okay. uni 2010, 9-ish, I mean, just, um, I went to Covenant University. We had like a very good research um, culture in us. And then I just found out that, I mean, there's something like imputing women issues on the, and the environment. And then there's something even more social that's not just on the environment, it's called sustainability, that's about resource efficiency for the present and for the future. It sort of connected with me because I wanted to do something not just different, but something that will impact, that lives beyond me, basically. And then sustainability was just it for me. And then leaving university, I started to volunteer with like anybody doing anything as similar. I worked for free with the Lagos State Government, okay. Lagos State Ministry of Energy, okay. just to learn about what they were doing with solar power and renewables and all. So basically, I've been building that knowledge and experience over time. And that's where I'm here now. Um, so yeah, back to up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Back to you. <laughs> Back to our pillars. Um, so the trusty business, like just encouraging entrepreneurs who want to go into businesses, telling them you need to think about sustainability, you need to think about ethics, corporate governance, all of that, all of those issues, basically. And um, we also have um, the team, the pop culture team. Um, basically, because we're young people, we, we, we keep thinking, how can we reinvent the idea of sustainability? Can we make it cool enough for people to engage? So we think of stuff like movie screenings, parties, hangouts, and that's one of our popular things. People know us like, these guys are always having parties, but they're talking about serious stuff, yeah. And that's how we bring the conversations to light. We had like a spoken word hangout one time in Abuja and different poets talking about climate change issues in poetry. Mm. So it's a different way to talk about these things and to get young people who uh, normally wouldn't have been interested, they won't attend a conference or a workshop. But yeah, they will attend a movie screening, there's popcorn, there's drinks, it's a networking opportunity. And it's some way to advocate and sensitize people on issues that really matter. So yeah, those, those are the things we do. So that's what's so beautiful about this because it's a young, it's young people doing stuff for young people and exactly. really connecting with young people when you guys sort of look at your the people you work with what is the demographic what are the age groups when we say young people when when you define young people how are you defining young people? well I mean when we started we wanted to do say 16 to 30 but now we're doing 10 12 because we mm. go to secondary schools and these um, students are asking really important questions you know 
and then we partner with other organizations who even go to as like really young children, four or five. Oh, wow. You know? yeah, You're so getting them young. Exactly. Like young children are planting trees, you know, cleaning up the beach and all of that. But basically, um, so now I think we'd say 10 to as much as 35. We have volunteers who are 32, 33 and all who are able to um, partner with us and just put one thing or the other, just like their spare time, let me do something for the planet and for sustainability. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's wide. So Jennifer, you've all, you sound like you've been volunteering for a long time. Mm -hmm. You started an organization that runs on volunteers. About how many volunteers do you have in your network? Well, currently we have over 150, you know. And what we've kind of done is we now have a community because because it's a volunteer-driven organization, not everybody has time to do the really important thing. So we say, okay, let's have our community. You can be a partner, you can be a friend, you can be a core volunteer. Everyone has their part to play in the different teams that they're working with. So there's just a whole lot of us, and um, we've sort of started even forming, like when people apply, we look at you, can you really do the work? Are you passionate or do you just want to be a monk mm. and use our hashtag. Be cool for, yeah, you know. use our hashtag okay. Susty Vibers Rock. Because sometimes you see people on their Twitter bio, they're like Susty Viber, official or volunteer. We're like, okay, what do yeah, you do? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're being very careful about the people we're working with. And then because the community now is um it's almost it's getting to that stage where like where the go to youth network for mm. sustainability mm. issues. Organizations reach out to us to say, please advertise what we're doing, you know, talk to your volunteers who's interested in doing this. And then we're getting opportunities for conferences in Nigeria, outside of Nigeria. I've had the opportunity to travel like quite some time, like speaking on the issues I'm doing with Susty Vibes on climate change and women development. So that opportunity and that platform is what we've created for young people to gain experience in sustainable development and also build themselves as better people. Um, we started a campaign, for example, to say Diary of a Susty Viber. How's uh -huh. it been so far? And some of the experiences literally brought tears to my eyes. I'm like, we didn't know we we're having this much impact of, on people wow. doing really amazing stuff, building themselves, learning how to express themselves in the WhatsApp group of communities, just coming to hang out with other committed people that know that uh, we can't do everything, but we can do just one thing. We can just make a difference in our own little way, basically. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yes. So, I have I, my question to you is you work on an organization that is fully run by volunteers. You survive because of volunteers. Mm. And most of the people you work with are under the age of 30, a little bit of 35. Yeah. Well, how did you feel last week when you heard what the president um, of Nigeria said in an international setting where he, to paraphrase, that Nigerian youths were not hardworking and living off of oil wealth or mm. sort of taking advantage of that? How did that make you feel, especially since you run your organization, on young people, they do, on young people donating their time for free. Well, I mean, at first it was embarrassing. Like, well, I'm like, oh wow, <laughs> um, this is someone like we were rooting for for change and all. It was embarrassing for me because I'm like, no, young people are not la lazy. Like, we're entrepreneurs, we're tech people, we're doing amazing stuff in fashion. We're literally like the go-to people in Africa. It was, um, I thought it was insensitive because, mm. I mean, for me, it was like a direct insult, like you're lazy. And I know I put a tweet out, like for the past two years, I've literally been working for Nigeria, mm. sustainable mm. development. Mm. And then my country tells me that I'm lazy and dependent on oil. It was like a slap on our face. But, we push, we move on, and then we just do what we have to do, basically. Yeah. And what advice do you have for the president? Well, I think he should do his homework. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he has young people around him as aides and all. He should just ask them questions. I mean, social media is there for you to see what people are doing. We started an amazing hashtag when um, Lazy Nigerian Youths, just going on the hashtag, people have put out their business and their work. You're literally inspired. And if he doesn't have time to do that, even the vice president has just been on a tour looking at tech um, uh, companies in Lagos and Abuja. Just ask him, basically, rather than just going to in an international place to say we're lazy, just ask around. Yes, that easy. Well, we don't think you're lazy, and that's why we have you here on the <laughs> couch, you. because we want to make sure that stories like yours inspire 
other people, and not just young people, older people that want to get into sustainable development. So thank you so much for being here. I thank wish you. you all the best. Tell us quickly how people can follow you, how they can donate, how they can be part of your organization. Well, um, we have a contact us page on our website. It's www.sustyvibes.com. We're on Twitter, like literally every social media platform, at Susty Vibes. So anyway, like search for Susty Vibes, you'll find us Twitter. It's time now for a short break, but stay tuned, because when we return, we will be empowering you with knowledge of your basic rights as Nigerians. Don't go away.